have a part of my head. Okay, gotcha. Please continue to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our ESL and citizenship students will now lead us in the pledge. Citizens, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please continue to stand. East Hartford High School student Lillian Bertram will now sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rock the bombs burst 
Thank you, Lillian. Everyone, please be seated. Hello, my name is Anthony Mangifico, and I am the director of East Hartford Adult and Continuing Education. I would like to formally welcome everyone to the 49th commencement ceremony of our program. We have many dignitaries in our audience tonight, and I would like to thank them for attending. I would like to thank our superintendent, Mr. Nathan Quinnell, as well as our deputy superintendent, Ms. Anne-Marie Mancini, for attending tonight. We also have many members of our Board of Education here tonight, including Chairperson Brian Hall, Vanessa Jenkins, and Marilyn Pett. Thank you very much for being here tonight. We are very fortunate in East Hartford to have such a dedicated Board of Education that regularly attend our graduations and is a big supporter of our program. We also have in attendance tonight Marcy Reed from the Connecticut State Department of Education, Mark Weinberg from the East Hartford Town Council. Thank you, Mark. This past school year has been very exciting for East Hartford adult and continuing education. We were finally able to start a GED in Spanish class for our students. It only took me four years, but I finally found a terrific teacher so that we could offer this class two evenings a week. Our Spanish-speaking students can now learn the content needed to pass the rigorous GD exam in their native language. And we are looking to expand our GD in Spanish program for the fall. In March, one of our former graduates, Hala Mashore, was honored at the Connecticut Association for Adult and Continuing Education Conference as the Learner of the Year for the State of Connecticut. Hala earned her GED in 2018 and was one of our graduation speakers last year. Hala is now enrolled at Manchester Community College and continues to be involved in our program as a community liaison. We had a second winner at that same conference. Our retired ESL teacher, Carmen Golis, was honored as the Educator of the Year for the State of Connecticut. We were so honored to have had Carmen work with our program for decades. And Carmen continues to assist as a substitute teacher and as a translator at registrations and other events. Uh, in fact, you'll be seeing her later today. I think she's actually in charge of setting up the snacks in the cafeteria later. Both Carmen and Hala were also honored by a standing ovation on the floor of the Connecticut General Assembly last month. I would like to give a special thank you to Representatives Henry Jenga and Jeff Curry for helping to make that happen. Two of our students, Kadush Lafraini and Elizabeth Salinas, were, uh, were able to earn their Surf Safe certification through our partnership with Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford and New Covenant United Methodist Church. They were even featured in a local Fox News broadcast. And in April, Kadush and Cecile Resto were honored with Learner of the Year awards from Voices on Connecticut Adult Learners. In August, one of our former GD graduates, Rohan Coates, completed his manufacturing credential through our partnership with Goodwin College and is now employed at a local manufacturer. I would also like to take this time to recognize two of our adult education family members who are retiring this year. Ann Scanlon, our longtime data entry and payroll clerk, retired in January. Ann worked for East Harvard Public Schools for many years, and her dedication to education and to our students was evident every day. Thank you, Ann. And I'm not sure if secretary is the best word to describe all that Lucy Hull does for our program on a daily basis. She coordinates field trips, plans most of the graduation details, orders the materials needed for instruction, works daily with current students and future students, and is the person most responsible for making our office run so efficiently. Lucy will be missed when she retires at the end of June. Thank you, Lucy. Thanks to the dedication of our staff, East Hartford Adult and Continuing Education's total student body increased by 21% this year, and our number of graduates increased by 47% from last year. It has truly been an amazing year for our program. From my, remark, from my remarks tonight, I would like to invite all of you in the audience tonight to be present in this moment. With so many distractions all around us, from our smartphones, to the continuous 24-hour news cycle, to the never-ending pile of work we take home each night, it's important that we focus on being present. In adult education, we often start off with a large class, only to be left with half as many students a few months later. Why is that? While it may be because of child's care or because of work, I've always felt that many students just weren't present and invested when they first start class. You cannot simply show up to class and expect to earn a diploma in a few months. It takes hard work. 
just ask all of our graduates tonight. You not only need to attend class, but you need to be an active participant. Do the work, ask the questions, and be present. Many of those students who think they can just show up and earn a diploma aren't present and end up leaving our program after a few weeks. I encourage all of our graduates to not only be present in the classroom, but also beyond East Hartford adult education. Whether you're enrolled in a community college in the fall or plan on finding a better job, be present and don't let life's distractions get in the way of your success. When you're at home or spending time with your family or on vacation, put away your cell phone or tablet and be present and enjoy the experience. Many things, such as your high school graduation, only happen once. Savor it. Remember it. Be present in that moment. I recently read a book in which the author mentioned that we are so busy trying to capture moments on our phones to post on social media that we actually do not enjoy the moment as much as we could have if we had just focused on what was right in front of us. Don't get me wrong, I'm guilty of this as well, but the next time you're at a restaurant, don't take a photo of your meal and post it on Instagram. When you're at the beach, just jump in and enjoy. No need to tweet about it so all your friends know what a great time you're having. When you're at a concert or a sporting event, enjoy the moment, be present, and leave your smartphone in your pocket. I hope that it, as this evening progresses and as your lives move forward, you will remember to always be present. Thank you. I would now like to welcome Board of Education Chairperson, Mr. Brian Hall. Good evening. All right, we're going to try that one more time. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to stand before the East Hartford Adult Education graduation here at this 49th graduation exercise. Let's give the class of 2019 a round of applause. So before I go forward, I have a couple of board members that wanted to hang out with you in the audience. I want to recognize Harry Madison Jr. who's sitting there to the right of me. And in the back, we have Ms. Val Scher. Uh, the rest of the board members that are here, of course, have been already been recognized by our adult ed director. So here we are, class of 2019. I love this graduation for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, as the board chairman, I'm always excited to see people that have accepted a challenge in their life. Maybe a speed bump, I always say I drive a car and in certain places there's a speed bump and I gotta slow down sometimes because I don't want to tear my car up. But then in life sometimes also that speed bump may become a small hill. And because I drive a car that's not really that kind of car where it can tackle a hill, I always have to make sure that I'm driving the hill very cautiously. And I know in life sometimes we have those hills as well. And as I've learned in life, when you come to a situation where you have adults that have made a decision to set a goal before them, to set a challenge before them, something that some of you may could have done a few years ago. I was just informed by my board chair here to my right, Vanessa. We went to high school together. And why would you tell me when I come to a graduation that you just pulled out my old yearbook picture? <laughs> she said, your fro was lopsided and you had a big part on the side of your head. Mess me all up, but you know the important thing about it is, is the fact that I'm here tonight to celebrate with you because you've accomplished something that a lot of people would not come back and do. Secondly, I love coming to this graduation because you take that walk from the back of that door to your seats very seriously. All I needed was to put on some type of record and it was like y'all were stepping to the beat. Thought I was at a cookout watching y'all come down here, but very exciting. And then when I look in the front row, I must acknowledge, every time I come to an adult at graduation, they must put the best dressed shoe-wearing guys in the front row. I'm looking at some Gucci, some red suede, white bottoms. I want to say that's a new pair of Jordans in the front, but I'm always excited to see what you're going to be rocking on your feet because I'm a shoe man myself. But in all seriousness, I'm glad to know that you have taken East Hartford's opportunity to come to school in challenging times, at night, 
I know it's tough. Some of you are working. Some of you are parents. Some of you have probably been out of school a long time. But as board chair, I want to say congratulations because not only have you beat that speed bump, not only have you navigated that hill, you've climbed the toughest mountain that most people won't even challenge. So again, I want to congratulate you on a job well done. Give them another round of applause. In closing, when I look at this list of graduates and I see Justin and Vincent and Marquis and Tony and David, John and Philip and Edwin and Kevin and Cameron and Angel Lewis, then I see Diane Marie, Carlene, Zavari, uh, Jenny Lee, Christopher, Narika, Vergen, Kwan, Rhodesia, Melody, Joshua, Kiwan. Then I go down and see Jacqueline and Giacarlo and Elvina and Neveline, and, and I see people that are getting their citizenship from other countries. It makes me excited as an American to know that you have been willing to stand strong, come forward, be brave enough to walk at this stage of your life to continue your education so that you can help us continue to build an America that we hope that will be one that will bring success for, to people, not look at a person's skin color, not look at a person's religion, not look at their sexual orientation, but look at the standards of what they've qualified themselves to become. I say this to you, I'm proud to be able to give you your diplomas tonight. Keep up the good fight. You've done things that many people wouldn't even think about doing. So again, congratulations. The road has just started. Keep on keeping on, and I will see you at the top. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Hall. I would now like to welcome our superintendent, Mr. Nathan Quinnell. Good evening, everyone. Really also want to welcome Senator uh, Saoud Anwar, who joined us tonight. I know he had a really late night in session, so the fact that you're here is uh, really amazing. So thank you, Senator, for being here with us tonight. Uh, and I also want to say, for me, uh, congratulations to our graduates. Uh, we are so incredibly proud of you, and it's, it's neat to see you sitting there uh, with that smile of success. And uh, that's an amazing feeling when you hit that point and you've earned that point. Uh, and another favorite part for me always with adult ed is I get to see Miss Enos. And every year uh, when I see Miss Enos, uh, she's, she tells me that I owe her a Rolex watch. I'm still trying to figure out why uh, or how I'm going to get one, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's always a pleasure to come here and, and be a part of that. And tonight, uh, families, thank you all for coming out and celebrating with your special graduate. Congratulations to all our citizens uh, that, that have uh, become U.S. citizens. We are incredibly proud of you and, and want to welcome you with the, the greatest East Hartford welcome there is possible. You know, so turning to our graduates, you know, for me, guys, when I think about this moment for you and I think about what's unfurling in front of you, of course, uh, when we talk about things, you're going to hear a lot. Of course, we talk a lot about resiliency and, and getting through challenge. But I want to throw one more R word at you tonight that I think is, uh, if there's a word, a pivotal word that's going to make your life a success, I think it's this word. And that, and that word is responsibility. And, and in, in your life, responsibility is something that, um, that you have to take and you have to never let someone take from you. Uh, responsibility is one of those things that it's about ownership. It's about accountability. It's about the fact that uh, responsibility wakes us up in the morning at times we don't want to get out of bed and responsibility brings us to work or to school or to military uh, because we are taking responsibility for our success maybe for those of us who have children our children's success for those who are taking care of loves we're taking care of their well-being responsibility separates people and it really is that dividing line it, sep it separates people who make it and people who don't make it. And I will really want to encourage you to understand the gift of responsibility, the power of responsibility. Don't, don't give your responsibility to someone else. Don't allow that to happen. When you give your responsibility to someone else, you take away your own power in life. You take your own, away your own ability to write that ticket to where you want to go. Responsibility is a word I think a lot of times that it obviously it weighs on us as it grows, but it makes us who we are and it gives us that character in our souls. And, 
And I really want to thank you for taking responsibility for taking your education seriously and coming back and getting your diploma. That's a sign of serious responsibility. At a time when you could have looked for someone else to save you, you brought it here and you saved yourself. And that is the only way out. That's always the only way out. And around us is an incredible, loving network who wants to take care of us and support us. But our success is our responsibility. And we approach each day, when we approach problems, when we approach success, when we approach setbacks, uh, armed with that mindset of, I'm responsible here, I got this, then doors start to open and doors stay open. So I'm so proud of you for showing responsibility. Uh, enjoy tonight, enjoy this moment with your family, and, and stay on this journey. Thank you for all you've contributed here at East Hartford Public Schools. We are so proud of our adult ed program and, and really proud of Dr. Mangiafico and the incredible work that he's led here. So give yourselves a round of applause and God bless. Thank you, Mr. Quinnell. I would now like to welcome to the stage Marcy Reed from the Connecticut State Department of Education. Thank you and good evening. It's always a pleasure to come out from our, I was going to call it the ivory tower, it's kind of copper colored. It sits at the intersection of 91 and 84 there. Someday if you're, if you're driving by you can give us a wave because we're up there in the Bureau of Adult Education and we're working for you. And we're working together to try to make adult education ever better for our directors, our teachers, and of course for the students. It's a pleasure to be here this evening and to be able to in person congratulate the East Hartford Adult Education Class of 2019. At the Bureau of Adult Education, we work with local school districts to support adult education in Connecticut for those who don't have a high school diploma or who do not speak English well. But we can only offer. A person has to decide for him or herself to walk through the door and to take advantage of that opportunity. I'm sure that many of you remember how it must have felt the day you first walked through the door of East Hartford Adult Education. And you took that important and maybe a little bit scary step to begin the completion of your high school diploma. You began on that day to turn dreams into goals. In all of the subsequent steps that have enabled you to get to this evening, you showed resolve and determination. You may not have succeeded on the first try, but you got it done. History is full of examples of people who succeeded because they just plain refused to quit. You may have heard of NBA star Michael Jordan, but did you know that as a sophomore, he didn't make varsity? There were 15 roster spots on that team that year, and he didn't get one. He was crushed. He went home, he locked himself in his room, and he cried. But the next day, he turned that into motivation. And he said on an interview a little while ago, he said, whenever I work out and I got tired and I figured I ought to quit, I ought to stop, I close my eyes and I see that list in that locker room without my name on it. And that usually got me going again. Tonight, you sit here ready to receive your high school diplomas. You did it. You have earned the right to celebrate your achievement with all of the people who supported you through this part of your journey. The wonderful staff of East Hartford Education, your families, and all of those who helped and believed in you. You are truly a role model, especially for those of you who have children for your children. Tonight, you have achieved a milestone. And you have also learned that persistence truly pays off. But tomorrow, remember the words of Winston Churchill, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. Take what you learned here, along with your new high school credential, and continue your journey. Take it to the next level. Go out, make a difference. Encourage some of your friends to come back. And above all, congratulations. We are so proud of you. All of us at the Bureau of Adult Education wish you continued success in your futures. Congratulations. Thank you, Marcy. We appreciate you celebrating this event with us tonight. 
I would now like to welcome ESL coordinator Susan Amon to the stage. She will give us an update on our English as a Second Language program. ESL is an important part of the East Hartford Adult Education Program. We provide classes for beginners who know almost no English on up to advanced learners who are contemplating a move to GED classes or on to trade school or even college. At the high school in the evening, we offer three different levels of ESL, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. During the day, we provide multi-level classes at, located at Hockenham School and the New Covenant United Methodist Church. Attendance at these classes has been growing steadily. It has been growing steadily because ESL is a lifeline to people new to this country. It's more than a class or a score on a test. It's a community of people coming together to learn about the language and customs of their new adopted country. There are many friendships made in the ESL class, and even a few marriages over the years. The people in ESL truly care for and help each other in class and sometimes outside of class as well. This year we had 147 people enrolled in ESL classes. They were from 34 different countries. In spite of their many differences, each one of these people had one specific goal in mind. They wanted to learn more English to make better life for themselves and their families. I admire their dedication and hope that each one of them will attain the goals they set for themselves. And now I would like to introduce Kathy Ladd, who will give out the Citizenship Awards this evening. Thank you. Good evening, honored guests, graduates, friends, and families. This past year, four of our students completed the naturalization process and became United States citizens. At this time, I'd like to ask the four recipients to line up at the stairs. To become a naturalized citizen, applicants must complete a lengthy process, which includes completing a 20-page application which is then followed up with an interview with a United States Custom and Immigration Service agent. During the interview, which typically lasts an hour to an hour and a half, the applicant is questioned about their application. The applicant must also be able to answer six randomly selected questions out of 100 civics questions that stem from an in-depth study of United States history and government. Examples of the questions are, who wrote the Federalist Papers and why are they important? Any takers? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> How many representatives are in the House of Representatives in Congress? What is the supreme law of the land? Why are there three branches in the United States government? At the conclusion of the civics test, the students must demonstrate that they can read and write proficiently in English and during the course of the interview, the applicants are monitored to determine that they can speak English fluently as well. I present this process to you because many people feel that citizen application process is easy, and as you can see, it is not. I am so proud of our students and all applicants who take this step and follow through the rigorous process of becoming citizens of our great country. As we look to our nation at this time, I think it's interesting and pertinent to note just a very small portion of our country's well-known natural citizens. Madeleine Albright, who became our first woman Secretary of State. Albert Einstein, renowned physicist. Bob Hope, a well-known actor who devoted much of his life to entertaining our troops overseas. Freddie Adu, youngest sport major league soccer player in the United States. Anthony Hopkins, Academy Award winning actor. Joseph Pulitzer, former journalist who created its most prestigious prize and bequeathed money to found the Columbia School of Journalism. Isabel Allende, one of the world's most 
read Spanish authors who received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in the United States. I apologize to the Red Sox fans here, but I couldn't go without mentioning Mariano Rivera, retired New York Yankee pitcher and one of the most famous closers in the history of baseball. Irving Berlin, songwriter who authored White Christmas and God Bless America. And last but most powerful, Elie Wiesel, political activist, Holocaust survivor who was imprisoned in Auschwitz and authored 57 books. Among these is his famous work titled Night, which chronicles his experiences in Auschwitz. And now, I would like to introduce East Hartford's addition to this amazing list of United States citizens. First, may I present Kitson Brown, who emigrated to our country from Jamaica 34 years ago. Second, Rosario Humbachano, who has been here for 10 years and is from Peru. <laughs> Next is Manny Chen Penhuang came from Laos 30 years ago and was actually a member of Miss Jean Kurth Subreski's class. is Rosario Velez. Rosario came from the Philippines and has been in the United States for about 16 years. One other person who is not in attendance but I would like to acknowledge is our director, Dr. Manjifico's mom, Mrs. Carmen Manjifico. Mrs. Mangifico emigrated from Brazil 45 years ago and received her citizenship just recently. I was very fortunate to be able to attend her ceremony in Hartford this past May, where we were all surprised by a visit from State Senator Richard Blumenthal. In conclusion, I would just like to add that each student, upon completion of their interview process, came back to our class and shared their experience with other class members. This is something that is not required, but something that they wanted to do. And joining in this process was Dr. Mangifico, who graciously came to our class with notes from his mom, highlighting her experiences for the students and answering questions as well. I am grateful for his thoughtfulness to engage in this process with my students. Lastly, and this is to you, I am honored that these students were part of my class, and I am so proud to be able to call them my fellow United States citizens. Thank you, Kathy, and congratulations to all of our United States citizens. As many of you know, I think I've spoken about this before at past graduations, both of my parents were immigrants who came to this country not knowing English and who finally, after all these years, are both now citizens. So whenever I visit our ESL classes and our citizenship classes and our GD classes, it kind of has a special place in my heart. So thank you for that. For the next part of our program, for the first time, East Hartford Adult and Continuing Education was fortunate enough to receive a scholarship grant from Liberty Bank. This evening, we'll be honoring three students with scholarship checks. Um, we were going to have Marlon Shields from Liberty Bank. Is he here in the audience? No? Okay, so I will do it myself then. 
So um, our first award winner tonight is Credit Diploma graduate, Tony Jackson. Tony, come on up. Tony joined our program in 2012 from Harford and Bloomfield. He started in the Harford GD program until he found out about our Credit Diploma program and quickly transferred to East Harford. He has thrived being part of our classroom setting and working with our teachers. Tony's involved in many community-based programs and has found a passion for helping others through music and arts. He has enrolled at Capital Community College and will be pursuing an associate's degree in music engineering starting in the fall. Congratulations, Tony. We need a tea for that. <laughs> Our second award winner tonight is Credit Diploma graduate Marquise Hightower. Marquise, come on up. Marquise came to us from Windsor High School, and like many of our graduates, he only needed a few remaining credits. Marquise has been dedicated to spending hours in the computer lab finishing online classes in addition to classroom-based courses. Marquise has enrolled at Porter and Chester Institute in Rocky Hill, and he hopes to become an electrician. Congratulations, Marquise. And our third scholarship recipient tonight is Keon Wilson. Keon entered our adult education program in September of 2018, and after attending classes, he graduated in December. He now attends Capital Community College, where he is a full-time student, majoring in chemistry. He hopes to earn an associate's degree and then transfer to Eastern Connecticut State University, where he will continue his pursuit of chemistry. His long-term goal is to be a chemist for a large pharmaceutical company. Ladies and gentlemen, Keon Wilson, who is also our first graduation speaker tonight. So you can speak first. Okay. Stand up. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good evening, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, and graduates. Well, we did it, accomplishing one of the major early milestones of our lives, graduation. This is a major step in the journey of our lives, one that should be recognized for its immense significance. It is an act not only of personal commitment, but also one of pride. We all worked hard to get to this day, and our work did not go to waste. Today, we stand on the brink of a new chapter in our lives. Take a moment to reflect on everything that we have achieved. Take a moment to look back and see and appreciate just how far we have all come. Today is our opportunity to acknowledge our accomplishments. Acknowledge and appreciate what we are today and dare to be all that we, you can be tomorrow. As the graduating class of 2019, we need to express our gratitude for the wonderful opportunities that we were exposed to. Our thanks must go to the staff and faculty members of the East Hartford Adult and Continuing Education. We are privileged to have attended this institution. As we made a relatively smooth transition into life beyond this institution, I am sure that the fine education that we received will ensure a future of success. Graduation is not an end goal in itself. It is instead a part of a larger journey of life. Wherever your future takes you, let it take you somewhere. Life is a journey, and all accomplishments we achieve during its course should be taken as starting points for further achievements. Our graduation should serve as a launching point, projecting us to wherever our futures are meant to take us. Whether we lend ourselves a career, take up a trade, or continue our education at college, vocational, or technical schools. 
Regardless, tonight, if you graduated from the Adult Basic Education Credit Diploma, Citizenship, ESL, or GED programs today, each of us have new opportunities to continue growing and to learn new skills that we will carry with us for the rest of our lives. This graduation has already shown us how capable we all are of accomplishing our goal and commit when we commit ourselves to them. I hope all of us here today can take this personal accomplishment as an example of how anything is truly possible when we put our minds to it. As we all continue on in our lives, let us take each new problem and tackle it with confidence. Knowing that we have achieved great heights and are equipped with the necessary tools to tackle our futures, the road that lies ahead won't be easy. There would be obstacles, missed exits, potholes, and roadblocks. There will be times when each of us will feel like we cannot possibly go on. You may find that the world shows indifference and dispiritness at you. You will find yourself facing prejudice and intolerance. You may even find that the world will laugh at your dreams or that people will try to discourage you from achieving your dreams, goals, and aspirations. We have made it this far. Why should we back out now? Nothing worthwhile is easy, and that includes making the most of our futures. We will keep pushing because we know we can achieve our dreams. Let us be the best we can be so that we may fill our lives and the lives of those closest to us with happiness and with purpose. We have already taken the first step by making it to the ceremony today. Now, it's time to take the next step in the journey and begin to build our futures. Thank you, Keon, and congratulations again to Tony, Marquise, and Keon. I would now like to welcome program facilitator, Kiro Ines, who will present the GD certificates. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, graduates, friends, family, my friend, Superintendent Nate Quinnell, Assistant Superintendent Anne-Marie Mancini, Board of Education members, and all the other people that have acknowledged us tonight. It is my honor and it is my privilege to present to you our GED graduates. But before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about them. They are certainly heroes. The, de the dictionary defines a hero as a person who is admired for courage, outstanding achievement, and noble qualities. These people have all of them. You see, returning to school for them was not easy. For them, they had to discipline themselves to attend classes. Even after a hard day's work, even after a prediction that snow was coming after midnight. And they often had challenges, child care provisions, transportation, and fear. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the fear of returning to school and entering an unfamiliar and often unfriendly classroom for the first time in order for them to acquire the necessary skills and education which they knew was a passport for a better life. As Malcolm X once said, education is the passport to the future for tomorrow, for tomorrow belongs for those who prepare for it today. It is also said that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. These students have certainly shown us where they stand. In closing, let me quote Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, when he says, graduates, don't let the noise of others', of others opinion drown out your own inner voice. Have the courage to follow your heart and your tuition. They somehow already know what you want to become. 
Remember the road to success is not straight. There's a loop called failure and a curve called confusion. Speed bumps called friends, red lights called enemies, caution lights called family. But if you have a spear for determination, an engine called perseverance, and a driver called faith, you will make it to a place called success. Thank you for taking Mr. John and I and all of the adult education staff on the first part of your ride. Congratulations, good luck, and I love you all. GED graduates, please stand. Come around. Our first GED graduate is Diane Aguda. She entered our evening program in the fall of 2018 and received her diploma that same year. Not an easy feat when you have four children at home. At the present time, Diane is working. She doesn't really have plans for future education, but she said that she's learned a lot, and we congratulate her and wish her the best of luck. Carlene Bennett. Carlene was born in Jamaica and came to America in 2017. Although she had finished high school in Jamaica, she began attending East Hartford Adult Education in January of 2018. At one point, she was attending both the morning and the night program at the same time, driving me crazy to figure out where she was. In December of 2018, she earned her GED degree and took the para protest to become eligible to work as a paraprofessional in the district. At the present time, she is a special education para at East Hartford. Her goal is to go into an associate's program in social work. Carlene said what she liked best about adult education were the teachers. Thank you. Congratulations. around the front. Our next graduate is supposed to be Xavier Brown. Xavier sent me a text about an hour ago and he is stuck in Massachusetts without a ride. He's in Massachusetts, by the way, in college already. So we'll move on to Jenna Lee Collins. Originally also from Jamaica, Jenna Lee started our program and she passed her state exam in May of 2019. Again, not an easy task with four children at home. At the present time, Jenna Lee is looking for a job in early childhood education, but her goal is to attend Goodwin College and major in phlebotomy. Jenna Lee credits her teachers with the learning, especially math. Mrs. Bollier is out there and she's smiling. Congratulations. Nurika Linton. <coughs> Nurika entered our program in August of 2018. In December, she earned her GED after attending morning classes at New Covenant United Methodist Church with Mr. Patrick. She hopes to someday go into the nursing field. She told us she enjoyed the friendly environment that was provided her at the church. Congratulations, Nurika. Wayne Riley. Wayne entered our program in September of 2018. He also is originally from Jamaica 
and he tells us that he sends money periodically back home to his family. He's presently employed as a at a furniture store making furniture. He tells me that his getting his degree gave him a sense of satisfaction. He now appreciates education more. He also states that his education pushes him to not want his children to waste time like he did. Congratulations, Quinn. Rudika Siam. Starting with us in January of 2018, Rudika earned her GED in December of 2018. She's hoping to attend Capital Community College, where she wants to become an LPN. She was another one that attended both the day and the evening classes. She said she particularly liked the teachers, whom she felt put a lot of effort into their students in order to achieve, for them to achieve. We wish her luck in all her future ventures. Congratulations, Rudy. Melody came to us from Synergy. She entered our program in 2017, but then she stopped uh, coming for a while. She returned in 2018, nine months pregnant. She stayed with us until she gave birth. Then she went to work full time. And since her testing scores were so high, we encouraged her to come back into the GED program. She just recently passed her state GED, and she wants to go into nursing. When asked what she liked best about adult education, she said, the teachers. They are involved with the students, and they make sure you understand the subject matter before you move on. Melody is currently a full-time receptionist at the Home, Dep De Home Depot warehouse. Best of luck, Melody. Last but not least, my friend, Keon Wilson. You've already heard all about Keon. We're so very proud of him. He's going to be a chemist. But he needs to learn two things. He needs to answer his email and answer the phone when I call. Congratulations, Keon. And now I'd like to introduce Ms. Lisa McCarthy. Uh, she is the head of NEDP. Good evening. I'd like to ask the NEDP graduates to line up at the stairs, please. NEDP stands for the National External Diploma Program. It is a web-based program for adults to earn a high school diploma. It usually takes six to 12 months and is self-paced. Students work individually with an assessor to complete the program. It can also be completed com with complete confidentiality. Students have multiple opportunities to demonstrate mastery of academic skills in core subject areas and to complete a total of eight competency areas. Students who complete the program note that they have learned many new skills and are looking to their futures with pride, confidence, and optimism. Completing the NEDP program is truly a challenge and truly life-changing. So now I'd like to introduce my graduates. Jacqueline Blackwood. <laughs> Jackie uh, lives in Bloomfield with her husband, daughter, and son. Her daughter was also graduating and will be attending Howard University in September. Her eldest daughter lives in East Hartford with her husband and son. Jackie has been doing home daycare for five years. Now that she's earned her diploma, she's interested in pursuing a career 
working with children with disabilities. Jackie thinks the program was awesome and has recommended it to other people. Congratulations, Jackie. We're so proud of you. Christina Martinez Cruz. Christina lives in East Hartford with her son. Uh, she has worked with children at both the Y and an after school program for eight years. She, works, she had worked in retail but then began working with children and has found her passion. She has learned a great deal about early childhood education and is very effective with young children. She is planning to pursue her education now that she has earned her diploma. She has worked diligently and has finished the program in just a very few months. Christina is also our newest graduate, so in fact, we couldn't get her name into the program, but she's, <laughs> she's here. Congratulations. <laughs> Giancarlo Ortiz. Giancarlo began the NDD program in April of 2018. He lives in East Hartford with his family and he works full time and a lot of extra hours uh, in, a, in a book factory. Now that he has earned his high school diploma, he is planning to attend Lincoln Tech to pursue a career in the automotive field. That is his passion and he's excited to take the next step in his journey. He will do very well in his new cho chosen career and we wish him the very best. Alvina Stewart is our next graduate. Alvina completed the NED program in April. She lives with her son and daughter, who are very proud of their mother. Alvina's daughter is also graduating, so we have two, two pairs of mother and daughters graduating this year. Uh, the first time we've had that happen. Alvina is planning to attend C Capital Community College to become an x-ray technician. She shared that she liked the program and learned a lot and definitely improved her computer skills along the way. We wish Alvina the very best in her endeavors. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next graduate is Neveline Velotis. Neveline grew up in Hartford and then moved to East Hartford. She lives with her husband and three children, 11, 7, and 3, so she's a very busy mom. Uh, so completing this program was a lot of work. She is hoping to attend school to become a paraprofessional. She said that the program is difficult and a lot of work, but is absolutely worthwhile because you learn so much. So we are very pleased to see Neveline earn her diploma and know she will do well in any career she chooses. Congratulations, Neveline. Our last graduate has chosen to remain anonymous. Uh, she earned her diploma in the fall and notes the tremendous sense of pride and satisfaction upon completing the program. She would recommend the program to anyone who needs their high school diploma. Um, she was very successful. And so congratulations to my NEDP graduates. Outstanding job. And now I'd like to welcome to the stage our second speaker and Liberty Scholarship recipient, Tony Jackson. Uh-oh. Good evening to everyone. Um, to my fellow classmates, our director, adult education teachers, our superintendent members, the Board of Education, the town council, and all of our friends and family who have joined us here tonight. My name is Tony Jackson, and I'm proud to be one of your graduation speakers tonight. I want to thank you for inviting me to say a few words on this important benchmark in your life. Some of you have struggled to make it to this point, and for some of you, it may have been taking a long time, but you did it. 
Life can throw us many different curveballs, some good and some bad. Sometimes it seems that there are too many hardships and burials to do what we need to do. But what we make of our opportunities truly define who you are. Although we have taken the less traditional approach to education, we have now opened doors we once thought were closed and expanded those opportunities once not available to us. Adult education has given us another chance at life and allowed us to make up for past unfavorable choices and decisions that we might have not made. As we leave tonight, we must reflect on the past and apply our insight into the future. We do need to pursue our dreams with that very same passion that got us here tonight. Do not let one single person get in the way of those dreams. It is now your time to make your life what you want it to be. May we develop ourselves as individuals, inspire others, and improve the world that we live in today. I would like to say congratulations to our graduating class of 2019. Thank you, Tony. Doug Frazier, our guidance counselor, will now present our final graduates. Thank you. you have mouth on? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Well done, Tony. Cred diploma graduates, please stand up and line up at the stairs. While they're lining up. It's a well-deserved round of applause, fellas. All guys this year, very rare for us, yeah. So our, our credit diploma program is a unique opportunity for students like these gentlemen here who started in high school and earned a lot of credits towards graduation, but for any variety of reasons had to step away temporarily. And now they found their way back. And unlike our GED graduates who were preparing for an exam, these men were here in the evening taking classes in combination with taking online classes, working with our teachers to earn those credits that they just didn't finish for any variety of reason, but it doesn't matter because they're here now and they've done it. And so with that being said, our first graduate, Vincent Ferrer, he's got a good crowd here. Vincent came to us just this past fall. He was an East Hartford student, working part-time. He has a huge fan crowd out there, obviously. But he's the type of student that we, we love. He came in, and you can see it on his face right now. Every night, you see that smile. And he's just that type of student who comes in, works, grinds it out. And he came in in September, and you're across the stage now. That's the type of student that we love and we work with, and he is a great example of why we're here. Congrats, Vincent. You've actually already heard all about our next two graduates, but they still get to have their names called out here and walk across. One of our Liberty, Liberty Bank Scholarship Award winners, Marquise Hightower. Congrats, Marquise. Come on over. Congrats, buddy. Tony's spending a lot of time on stage this evening. Another one of our Liberty, Liberty Bank Scholarship Award winners and graduation speaker, Tony Jackson. Oh. Nobody wants these flowers. We'll just put that back here a little bit, yeah. Carol's breaking everything. Yeah. <laughs> Our next graduate is Philip Ocasio. Philip, originally from Philadelphia, entered our program in 2016, and he has been a great example of what this program is built for. 
He's not just a father of six. He's also a full-time employee. He's also been one of our most consistent, hardworking students. He has been here nonstop, grinding away so that he could set that example for his kids and be walking across the stage tonight. Congrats, Philip. And our last credit diploma graduate of the evening is Mr. Cameron Shaw. Cameron came to us from Weaver High School in 2011, but he entered our program in 2018, and we very quickly saw Cameron's ability to take classes online, independently fly through the curriculum. He's a very intelligent man standing at the end of the stage over there. And he is currently pursuing his CDL license so he can continue a career as a truck driver. Congratulations, Cameron. Congrats, bud. There you go, Tony. Thank you, Doug, and congratulations to all of our credit diploma graduates. Before our graduates march out of the auditorium, I would like to remind all of our students and all of our family and friends in the audience that we have a reception in the cafeteria immediately following the ceremony, and we hope that everyone will be able to join us. When we conclude tonight, I ask that you please let our graduates walk out first, and then you can proceed right to the cafeteria where the grads will be waiting for you and we'll have refreshments that you can take photographs with your loved ones. Graduates, please rise. Please move your tassels from the right side to the left side. Ladies and gentlemen, the East Hartford Adult Education Class of 2019.